What one mistake ended your career? Working at a builder's merchants. Customer calls to place order over the phone, not unusual, and wants to give me the card details there and then, red flag. I initially refused, but another member of staff vouched for them as they were regular. Put the order through, knowing that whoever came to collect would need to come into the office for their paperwork before loading so we would have them on CTV if it did turn out to be suspected. Unlike the yard crew didn't follow process. When a van turned up for the goods, they loaded it all up and sent them away without asking for any kind of aid or manifest. The payment card was later reported as stolen, and the staff member who vouched for the customer denied even being in that day, which was a fucking lie, as she never took time off. I got fired and everyone else got to keep their jobs. Lifting wrong. 14 years of arboriculture coming to an end now. Not sure of the next job. 14 years might be enough to move into a supervisory managerial role if one exists in the field. It would allow you to still utilize your experience to some degree. Worked retail pharmacy for 10-ish years. One day, in the drive through we had a belligerent patient. Guy's doc sent his script to our other chain, about 1.5 miles down the road. We were on the same street. Addresses get mixed up all the time. No biggie, give me 10 minutes and I'll have it ready. Dude just starts laying into me for no reason. Calls me an idiot, calls me an idiot calls me incompetent, says he knows where his doctor sent it, and I'm a lazy, lying piece of shit, etc. After a few minutes going back and forth, with this guy yelling loud enough in my drive through that other staff inside the store can hear him, I tell him he needs to leave and find a new pharmacy. Guy lays into me again, refuses to leave. I tell him fuck off or I'm calling the police. Apparently that was over the line for my company, no interview with her. No discipline, no suspension, just straight up fired my ass about three weeks later after internal investigation. You did the right thing. Led and recruited a sales team. One of the female sellers admitted that our CEO was sexually harassing her. Got her to confess to our sales manager. Found out that more of our female staff had similar experiences, so I rallied them as I needed evidence before proceeding. CEO got an ear full from her proceeds to pressure all his female victims until one of them drops my name. I get fired. This is illegal. You should go after them. Built a castle out of Christmas chocolate biscuit boxes in the warehouse of a major retailer on a night shift and proceeded to fall asleep in it for a few hours. Called the whore lady the angel of death to a co-worker on chat. Who was in a different state, so any time they came to town we all knew it was most likely to lay off people. Angel of death came to get me shortly after. Lady got mad and only proved you right, Lau. I once worked in a company as the help desk tech that would come collect tech while people were in with a getting fired. Got the nickname Grim Reaper because if I showed up with my cart and nobody in that department called, then one of their colleagues wouldn't be coming back from their meeting with her. They bring out your dead. Lol, so it was an appropriate name. I was the assistant director at a summer camp. One of the very last nights was a sleepover night where all of the campers were there, but not all of the regular day staff. Two of the counselors were caught drinking beer, and in an attempt to weasel his way out, one of them told the head of the camp that I gave him permission to do so. I most definitely had not. While I didn't get fired on the spot or have my year-end bonus withheld like the other two, I was told I wouldn't be asked back again for next year, where there had already been talks of me being a full director in the future. People who instantly believe the words of people breaking the rules are the biggest idiots. Browsing for another job while at the job. That's why you do it on your phone, using your own mobile data. So you're saying that if I search big beautiful butts on my mobile via my company's Wi-Fi that my it guy knows how I get down, asking for a friend. No, he'll allow it. He talked about comp to another employee. They told the manager about it. Got fired. The good part is, it's illegal and the idiot created a paper trail around it. They settled out of court for way more than they would have saved by people not talking about comp. Your work friends are not your true friends. Not exactly a career, but I worked in a fast food spot that didn't have any air conditioning. And there's a worker's law where I live that states once it gets to a certain temp in the building they legally can't stay open. I brought a thermometer to work. Fuckers should be thanking you for helping them stay in compliance.
There's an old statement I remember hearing, everyone loves firemen, everyone loathes the inspector that pairs well with the other statement safety regulations are often written in blood which kinda encapsulates how many people out there think about things like preventative maintenance. All it takes sometimes is for someone to die from something completely preventable to make sure a rule is followed and that people never value the people that call this stuff out early. It creates more work and I have all these other important things to do. Mm, they cry. But then they turn around and glorify the people that have to respond in a crisis as the heroes were saving them from. Themselves... This isn't to say firefighters don't deserve it. They absolutely fucking do. But so do the people that call out stuff that can go sideways before it happens to give you a chance to fix it first. Everyone loves firemen. Everyone loathes the inspector. I'm a health inspector. Restaurant employees not liking me is understandable. Although good owners employees are respectful and understanding, but the general public hating me was a surprise. I'm out making sure food is safe to eat, but when I close down a restaurant because it isn't sanitary, people get downright hateful. Yet when they think they get sick from eating somewhere, then where is the first place they call? Oh yeah, also us. Edit. I'm only editing to add a thank you to all the support people have shown. I am appreciative of so many Redditors appreciating me and my profession. I truly wish more of you were vocal in the real world because we rarely hear anything but negativity. Even if I seldom hear that you value our work, I am glad to know that it isn't unnoticed. Be safe, everyone. Wait, what? Regular people who go to restaurants don't want those restaurants to be checked by a health inspector. I know the, the other comment meant a fire safety inspector, and I'm sure there's many others that fall into the dislike category for inconveniencing people. But health inspectors, or if people, you guys are the one inspector I absolutely have no problem, possibly others too, but only one I can think of right now. I wouldn't want to eat in a restaurant that hasn't had their health inspection. The hateful people get hateful, the same kind of people who get angry at anything that slightly inconveniences them. The kind of people that interpret someone as telling me what I can't do as an attack regardless of the reason. Everyone else is like you, gross restaurant, glad it shut down. I sent a scathing email about my boss, directly to my boss. It wasn't meant for him. To this day, I still have no idea what possessed me to put his name in the address bar. I noticed his name the exact moment I hit send. You have never felt that much panic. I set my emails to delay being sent for 10 seconds after hitting the send button. It's been useful many times. You'll never proofread an email better than right after you hit send. There needs to be a word that describes a person after they send an email. You spontaneously turn to a spelling and grammatical savant. You remember every discussion topic that was accidentally left off the email. You remember people that should have been included. Post-click clarity. I use two minutes. Not taking chances low. I use two weeks. It prevents a lot of problems, but admittedly causes some too. Mine go out after a month or so. Not because I have a delay set, I just really like Internet Explorer. I have mine set to send once a year on a Friday at 3.58. I handwrite my letters and then burn them. No need to send. The energy of the universe will communicate the required sentiment. I fill in the to and see fields after I write the email. If it's a reply and I know it's especially sensitive, I'll start a new email to write it, then copy paste it into the reply email. My first job in it, I worked with a guy who would send the worst emails, typically full of spelling errors, and any time he was pissed about something, he'd just fire it off without thinking. I didn't feel it was my place to tell a guy what he should be doing, especially since I was new. We worked in an area where there was about 15 people. It was a wide open area with no high walls. We were all level three support, senior folks who did the hardest jobs. One day our team lead stood up, stretched his arms out and said, loud enough for everyone to hear, Joe, do you ever check the emails you send out before you hit the send button? Joe, no, tello. Well, you should because they really are shit. After that, he would often get me to read his emails, correct spelling and advise if he should send it or not. This is why I write my emails first, then go over them to make sure it's what I want to say. Then I put their name on it. I'll never put anything into an email I wouldn't be comfortable with everyone reading. Same goes for text messages or Microsoft Teams or Microsoft Teams or any of it. If I need to gossip or bitch, I'll call co-workers on their cell phones to do it. Sent an email to someone I thought was helping me, threw me under the bus. Same thing here. 
stood up for myself one too many times, texted a co-worker about this, and some shared concerns he had also talked about with me. Co-worker showed already angry boss my text. Bye-bye job and career. Never put anything in writing that can be used against you later. I've always heard this, not coincidentally from in-house councils, as don't put anything in writing that you wouldn't feel comfortable having read out loud in court. Usually this is brought up after Slack or Teams or JChat. Channels get particularly rowdy. I'm sure people think I'm no fun for doing it, but unless it's a private phone call, I've made it a habit of replying to work Slack. Gossip attempts with a haha at most these days. Been there and done that. Got a job helping the Aikai, who didn't want anyone moving in on his territory. I didn't know this at the time. First thing he asks me is a list of my strengths and weaknesses, which I write out and give to him. He takes my list of weaknesses to the boss and convinces him that I shouldn't have been hired. I was fired ten minutes later. Edit. Just a quick update to answer questions. He told me that he wanted the list so he could give me jobs that I was good at while he did the jobs that I wasn't. It was my first it job working under someone, so I thought it was a fair request. Never did it again. I went to an interview at a friend's workplace, recommended by friend as the workplace literally had a hire a friend's policy. Small bonus if your referral succeeds. The hiring manager spent 95% of the interview trying to dig up dirt on my friend rather than interview me. It was surreal. I was a part-time intern making $9 an hour, oozed, and my boss asked if I had any plans for the weekend. I had said I was going to buy a new car, very much old and used as that's what I could afford, and he asked if I was buying a brand new car. My response was that my budget isn't big enough for a new car, and a couple weeks later, during my one-year review, my manager said they didn't have the work for me, and that I was disrespectful for telling the boss I didn't make enough money. At the time, I was living comfortably as a college student, just needed different transportation. I tried not to be disrespectful, but apparently I was. You didn't make a mistake at all. Your boss was being a prick. How would you be buying a new car on $9 an hour? He knew how much you were getting paid and chose to ask you about a major financial decision. Screw that guy. Hey, do you make enough to buy a car? No, fuck you too. The correct answer was, thank you for my pittance, generous and noble employer. It's probably just an excuse to get rid of the kid. They have to make up something for the paperwork. One time my boss asked me if I had a minute to look at some problem one of my teammates couldn't figure out, and I told him I can look, but I'm dealing with a million tickets this morning. He said it's okay, he'd like me to help and the tickets can wait. I fixed the problem all the tickets and probably did 5x more that day than anyone else, just like every other day. My end of the year review had a comment that said, Vix is effective but exaggerates his workload to avoid taking on more tasks. He wanted to write something to justify the average review raise he gave me, even though I was doing far more work than anyone else. That nonsense was all he could think of. I considered punching him a million times, but decided against it. Did that swizzle? Dick motherfucker think a part-time intern was able to afford a new car? I assume they were thinking, why don't you just borrow $20,000 from your parents? They were most likely thinking, why don't you borrow $4,000 from your parents? Because you know folks like that aren't known for keeping up with the prices. Hurt boss's ego. That's always a firing for sure. Derailed it a bit. Took some years to recover. Got security responsibilities added to my duties as sysadmin at a small university. Was asked by my boss boss, the IT director, to do a security auditor. To do a security audit, he asked me to report on the audit at a department meeting. I asked if I could present my results to him privately instead and have him present to the meeting, but he insisted I could take care of it. My report showed major security holes, demonstrations of tests of said holes and recommendations for patching said holes. Many of the patches were at the level of change, the administrator password from password to something less obvious. As my political acumen was near zero at the time, I didn't realize how the report on major security problems made the IT director look completely incompetent in front of the entire department. He had built and configured the campus computer system pretty much on his own, at least in his mind, and was quite proud of his accomplishment. He suspended me on the spot, demoted me, and tried to convince the university to fire me, and tried to bring me up on criminal charges for hacking into the university's computer system. I'ma keep it a hundred with you. He was dangerously incompetent. That was purely retaliation and illegal under labor laws. You should sue.
Yea, like once it reaches the point of trying to bring up criminal charges against you for doing your job, it's time to get a lawyer. If he's willing to try and get you arrested for something like this, there's no limit too low for them not to stoop to in order to stop you. Had a workplace accident, fall from height, didn't get fired, but broke enough bones that I'll never work in that industry again. Same carpenter in the film industry, on the set of Supernatural, last day of season 12 before hiatus. We built a house on location, fell from that roof, shattered my heel, can't do the 12 hour days that is the standard in the industry. 12 year career gone in flames, just like that. Why I shattered both of my heels back in 2001. I was told I'd never be a runner. Did my first ultramarathon last year and plan on more. I will say I have to be extremely proactive with injury prevention and strength training, but it's worth it. I was opening my packages in the mailroom, using a pocket knife to slice open the package tape. Secretary came in and chatted. We're both Italian, so we gesture a lot while talking. Sometime after the conversation, the ops manager came down from his office and escorted me out of the building. Had forgotten the knife in my hand while talking with the secretary, and she made an accusation that I had threatened her with it during our conversation. Was fired three days later. I had worked with this woman for almost a decade. Helped her children with their homework, etc. Years later, I learned corporate wanted to take down my boss and started the process by going after his biggest supporters. I was the third domino to fall. After I was railroaded, almost 40% of the branch's staff left the company. I guess the secretary was in on it and leapt at any excuse to take me out. Shame, really loved that job and got fired when my first child was due in only four weeks. It was very demoralizing for quite a while. After I was railroaded, almost 40% of the branch's staff left the company oof, that had to hurt. Ironically, it was what the company wanted. Our branch, the youngest employee, had been there for maybe five years. So on average, we had the highest paid employees out of all the branches. Corporate wanted turnover, so they could bring people in at starting wages again. Our branch manager was amazing and would never comply with corporate's desires. Pretty detestable behavior on corporate's part. A guy I worked with was caught stealing two cigarettes from a colleague's bag, was on a six-figure salary, not anymore. How can anybody be so dumb? Especially as a smoker, he should be aware how other smokers are very likely to share their cigarettes with you if you just ask them. I bet he's that asshole who asks for cigs all the time and never shares any of his own. That's how you become a millionaire. Could have just asked someone to bum a smoke while went on a first date with a girl who turned out to be a horrible person 20 minutes in. I did what I could to get out of it because she was telling stories about crazy things she'd done and was proud of. I didn't pull anything to get out of it, just dodged landmines and asked a ton of questions about her so I could get out of it sooner. Then said I wasn't feeling the connection and I wanted to be honest so we didn't waste each other's time. Found out a week later that she contacted my previous employers because she found my LinkedIn, told them all stories about how I talked a ton of shit about them all, and now I can't get a reference from my previous three jobs, and people I was on good terms with, all because I went on a date with a psychopath? Isn't that illegal? Something like slander didn't happen to me. But I remember a co-worker of mine getting fired because he put laxatives in his own lunch bag. Some dickhead kept stealing parts of our lunches. Turned out, it was our supervisor. Edit. Jesus Christ. That's a lot of upvotes. Edit too. I'm not too keen on the specifics, since that co-worker and I weren't exactly friends or anything. Just kind of had simple conversations during lunch and whatnot. Apparently it is illegal to poison food with malicious intent. And some of my friends who worked there said he got into some legal trouble because of it. Nothing came of it from what I heard, but that's about all I know. Imagine stealing someone food and fired him. Yeah, that's shitty, no pun intended. It's illegal to do because of allergy stuff, I'm sure. I would have made the case that I needed those laxatives and was backed up. Not me, but my best friend. He found a stash of porn on a network computer that belonged to the boss, then showed it to everyone. Ended up working in a supermarket after that, and said half the people there had criminal records. Simple rules. Don't look at porn at work if you find porn at work. No, you didn't. It exists for a reason, and they will take care of it. If they don't, it's still not your concern. Ha ha. Rule one is very important. 
I'm in it, and years ago, one of my colleagues remoted into an operator's desktop, and he was not only watching porn, he had brought his own DVDs, because obviously, there was a corporate firewall. One screenshot got him fired really fast. It sounds like the wrong person got in trouble for that edit. There's so many people on here saying the boss shouldn't have gotten in trouble for syncing his porn to the work computer, and it's giving me really grimy vibe. I sided with the peeps under me as their manager. Do you I feel this one? It hasn't ended my career, but siding with people under me, these people over me, has definitely stymied my upward mobility. It's more important to have the back of the people you represent. In my experience, you get better production out of people who know you go to bat for them. Then your numbers and team performance look good, and they figure, well, he must be doing something right. This only works if the higher-ups actually value results based on data. In my experience, this isn't always the case. Same. After refusing to write up people who were performing well just because they weren't following one inane practice, and backed them up on the notion the practice was useful for new hires but not tenured staff, I eventually found myself demoted and sent to a different store to work. To Getting promoted to supervisor started the dominoes falling. I worked at a prison. I had been there for about seven years, and I knew I was most qualified, so I applied for the open sergeant's position. I got it, which is where this story starts. As a sergeant, it was my job to do investigations and document the findings whenever an inmate alleged his life was in danger. I would do the investigation and do a report on my findings, and it would get sent to the warden for them to interpret the evidence and make a final decision. So one day an inmate gets beat up on a building I was in charge of. This inmate had never spoken to me, and had never told anyone he was having friction with his cellmate. Well, when questioned about it, the inmate said he had told me he needed to be moved, and I told him I would. Initially, my supervisors believed him, but after I pulled up the surveillance camera that showed I had never even gotten down to that area that night due to being on a mission from another one of my supervisors all night, he admitted I hadn't talked to him. However, the higher-ups needed someone to blame, and because it was my area, I got the blame, and got fired. As a side note, I was salty about getting fired, because I cared about my job, but I wouldn't go back if they begged me. I have a much better job now, and the prison is so short-staffed because of how they treat their people. The officers are stuck doing 16-hour days, six days a week. No thank you. And it, suck it! What are they gonna do? This was the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. I have heard that being a prison guard is an absolutely terrible experience. Low pay, dangerous, full of disease, and you spend your life in prison. My dad was a prison guard in college. He was going to stay there and not even go to college, but the job is what made him go back to college because he knew he couldn't do it for long. When I was unemployed, I went to the job center, Ook, and the guy working there asked if I wanted to work in a prison as I was a big bloke. I asked what the prison service wanted with an engine emissions engineer. Being a correctional officer was one of the most miserable and soul-sucking jobs I've ever worked. The money was good though. A guy I knew got fired for sleeping with the boss's daughter. Nothing dodgy, entirely above board. He didn't even know they were related and had never met her before they met on a night out. He went back to her parents, place and they had said no problems no drama etc the next morning they got dressed and she was showing him to the door when her dad his boss walked out of the kitchen emo that's pretty fucked up they were consenting adults he had no idea it was his boss daughter no significant age difference she wasn't wasted or anything she'd never worked at or a fake even visited the company when my friend was there or even met him this is one of the plot points of 22 jump street I did a patty. Now I can't get hired anywhere. The irony. Workplaces are no longer impressed by bachelors. So you do a master's or a fake for another three, five years. Then they turn around and say you need more experience or that you're overqualified. You just can't win. Overqualification is basically shorthand for we know you're smart and you're gonna want to be paid a reasonable amount of money. So we don't want you edit. There's a lot of replies conveniently forgetting that people need money to live long. Yes, people will want to get temporary jobs until they find something better. That's how this country is built. It's systemic. Quit blaming the people looking for jobs. Job. Putting my faith in the person training me. This led to me being fired after only three months. I usually stay at jobs for a couple of years and I've never been fired before or since. 
thankfully, it didn't fully end my career, but I've struggled to get new jobs in the same sector ever since. Luckily, I can do the same job, but in different, less lucrative sectors. It all happened because I thought someone was helping me, when actually she was actually a backstabbing me. She was helping train me and explaining some very complicated inner workings of our company. She essentially explained how internally we talk about some product services as pooks and other product services as a tube. We don't talk like this to customers, though. We don't talk like this to customers, though. Only internally. Sorry, I have to be a bit vague here, otherwise explaining everything would take a whole Reddit post. What she said made perfect sense, and it helped me understand some nuances in our services. A week or so later, I was in a big meeting with lots of team leads trying to sort out a problem with a product that we were launching. And I asked the guy leading the meeting, so just to be clear, is this to do with the EA tube products? I'm a little unclear. He looked at me like I was going crazy. I don't understand. What are you talking about? Me. You know how X products are books. But our products are but tube, and that helps us categorize them internally for projects like this. The guy just stared at me like I was weird. I turned to the girl who helped train me. I kind of mumbled. How did you explain it the other day? She looked me dead in the eyeballs, piercing the window of my soul and said with a perfectly straight face, I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. So she made me look like a total idiot in front of all the team leads, which ruined my credibility. When I had my monthly 360 performance review, I had really negative feedback from the team leads and she as my trainer had given me really bad feedback about not listening during training, which was total mess. That incident didn't get me fired immediately, but she systematically worked out ways to make it look like I wasn't doing my job properly. So, after three months, my probation period was coming to an end and Ha saw my performance reviews and the reports that I wasn't doing the work even though I was, and they said we have to part ways. To this day, I still have no idea why she did this. We were doing similar jobs, but different enough that I wasn't stepping on her toes. We were also at the same seniority and pay grade, and I generally get along with everyone. I definitely didn't say anything rude or mean to her to make her dislike me, so I can't see a good reason for her to want to be fired, other than she didn't like my face or something. She acted so nice to me during training and around the office, I didn't know about all the negative stuff until it was too late. Love you, Sarah. Kind of the opposite. I worked at a second-hand electronic store. A dude came in with a pest due to sell. I noticed the serial number was scratched off and thought that was a concern, but processed it anyway. It went through testing, came back greenlit, and I assumed that meant that it was okay. Assumed wrong, management sacked my ass an hour later, went home, re-evaluated my life choices, and that year went back to college. Got my A-levels, then my degree, and now I've been a software engineer for almost 10 years. What would the problem be if the serial number was scratched off, that it was stolen? There was a database we could check against for stolen goods that required that number to check against. So if it had been reported stolen, we would be able to tell. I think there was another reason we kept the numbers, but I don't recall what it was now. Stock tracking, maybe? Call center taking a manager call. Put the chap on hold and comforted the team member. He is a bit of an asshole, isn't he? Forgot to also put the call on mute, and he requested a call on mute, and he requested a call recording. Then while on suspension, I broke my leg and went to my hearing after far too little sleep and too much tromadol. When they asked me what the impact of my actions was, I said it was crippling. Far too pleased with that pun to give a fuck about the outcome. Spent the next few months coasting through bills, selling bits and bats. Eventually got into marketing, a win in the long run. I told the truth about a workplace accident. They told me if I lied, I would still have a job. Basically, they wanted to be lied to and not hear the truth or have it brought up. So you would rather employ someone who lies than someone who is honest? I worked in public relations agencies for quite a long time, and mostly hated every minute of it. I didn't really understand what I was doing, but felt trapped in the business because I couldn't think of anything else I'd be able to do. I got into it because around 2005, 2010, social media was just becoming a big thing, and old school pie agencies would hire anybody who knew anything about Twitter, Facebook, and all these exciting new channels. 
Pretty much all I had to do was show up to meetings and enthusiastically explain what social media was to confused old business dinosaur. So, even though I knew nothing about poor and didn't really understand how agencies work, I quickly got over, promoted and for the first time in my life found I was in high demand, so I was getting paid more money than ever before. However, eventually social wasn't seen as such a big deal anymore, so I found myself just trying to do whatever work they threw at me, hoping I could keep hold of that sweet salary for a little longer. But because I wasn't into the job at all, I was always procrastinating, and I'd pull late nights to get work done at the last minute. One day my boss asked to see my progress on a big client presentation that wasn't due for another week. I literally hadn't done a single thing on it, and I tried to bluster my way out of it, but the shit hit the fan, and I got fired. Overnight I found I could no longer get interviews at agencies that used to be desperate for social media experts. To work for them, and really started to worry about how I'd find another job. In the end, it turned out to be the best thing that ever happened to me, because out of desperation, I took a temporary three-month contract to do some basic marketing stuff at a small tech company, and before my contract expired, the company got bought by a bigger company. They decided they needed a marketing director for my region, and because I was sitting in the right chair at the time, I got promoted and given a permanent contract. I was given plenty of time and space to figure out how to do the job as the company grew, so I felt much more comfortable in the role, not like I was constantly making it up as I went along. Been there seven years, love the job and the people, and earn more money than I ever thought I would. I love how everyone in this thread got shit canned or snaked by a co-worker, and you fell us backwards into success twice. That's not the half of it. I grew up in a train, wreck of a family, borderline poverty, to the point that I was on a watch. List for social services because of concerns for my well-being. Left school at 16, having failed all of my exams, desperate to get away from my insane home life. I'm sure nobody expected a kid like me to get any kind of happy ending. But I was always a geek, loved reading, loved video games. By sheer dumb luck, there was a company near where I lived that published video. Games magazines, back in the days when print magazines were still big, and I applied for a job as an office junior there, without really knowing what they did. I was waiting to get into the army, but figured this job would pay a little money while I was waiting to go through the recruitment process and get sent off to basic training. After a couple of months of filling the coffee machine and tidying the place up, I convinced one of the editors to read an article I'd written. They pretty much instantly gave me a junior staff, write a job which led to a 10-year career in tech video game journalism. That eventually fell apart during the dot combust, when a lot of those old print magazines went out of business and nobody had quite figured out how to make publishing online pay yet. That was when I got into peer because in my last writing gig, I'd been covering the internet and social media, which made me an expert in their eyes. So I'd been failing upwards ever since I was 16. I was involved with the secretary. We thought we were both discreet, but everyone knew. Edit. To clarify, we had a policy that said co-workers cannot engage in relationships. We broke the rules. I hated the place and took all the blame you keep her from getting canned too. It wasn't a full-blown relationship yet. We were just starting out. Also, that's all people did was gossip about stuff that was none of their business. At a previous place of work, uni, there were two married postdocs in their late twenties, who it turned out were having an affair with each other. No kids involved. It was already obvious that neither were well married and no problems I heard of at work once the relationship became known, since they were at the same level in the organization, but in different groups. What was funny about it was how some of us, their colleagues, found out. A group of us, not including the two having the affair, went for a trip to some hills that were about a 45 minute drive from our workplace. After walking around, we stopped for a drink at a quiet country pub. As I was walking from our pub table to the loo, I spotted the two affair colleagues sat at a table in a secluded corner of the pub, waved to them, and carried on to the loo. I went and sat down, kept quiet about what I'd seen, and each time somebody from our table went to the loo, I'd watch as they came back with their lips, pursed clearly trying to contain the urge to laugh or gossip. Literally everybody could see what was going on. Finally, one girl came back from the loo sat down and immediately blurted out, Did you see Steve and Yasmin over there? What are they up to? And everybody burst out laughing. At first I thought it to do something with your username. I asked why we are paying people massive salaries who aren't working at us anymore, while most of us haven't seen any increases or bonuses for five years. 
I saw a video once of a nurse explaining why she lost her job and nursing license. She took a photo of her entire emergency department trackboard with all the patients' names, birthdays and complaints and accidentally posted it on her public Snapchat story. It was meant to her friend, but everyone saw it and someone notified the hospital. Edit. Forgot to add that this whole fiasco was because she wanted to show her friend how the doctor misspelled something. We're told at every level of nursing school and training about the dangers of messing around with electronic devices and social media at work. That picture should never have been taken, regardless of what she had planned to do with it. Harassment by an air manager. I had to quit. Fucker. Tried to get better pay for my workers. Corporate did not like that.